and controlled. You could consider nanotechnology the installation of artificial intelligence in living and non-living things. Smart dust and smart moats, for instance, are tiny nanosensors that can float and land anywhere. As Kurzweil declares, self-replicating nanotechnology will infuse everything around us with itself. I see as a person, I'm human, and I'm really limited and restricted in what I do. So if I could come out of the singularity, being mentally and physically upgraded, yeah, I'd go for that. So I, I don't mind changing dramatically from what I am. I believe, Bolly, there will be flash memories you can plug into your brain. We'll be able to hook our brains into calculators and statistics programs and have uh, Google directly into the frontal lobes. I mean, there's going to be a lot of expansion of the mind through interfacing the human brain with, with technology. There's an unanswered question of how far can you go and still be human. As we merge with machines, and I think it's inevitable that we will, uh, we will transform into something new. And as the technology becomes vastly superior to what we are, then the small proportion that's still human gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it's just utterly negligible. Anybody who is going to be resisting this progress forward is going to be resisting evolution. And, and fundamentally, they will die out. It's not a matter of whether it's good or bad. It's going to happen. You have seen today the deposition and active presence of artificial materials in the sky, environment, and in living things. Nanotechnology has arrived at our personal doorstep without our permission. It isn't that this will happen in 2045. It's already here. Human enhancement is being sold to us as leaping tall buildings in a single bound and having better, fa faster, higher intelligence, perfect health. But all of that is the sales pitch. Enhancement may in fact be degradation, our being devolved to someone else's specifications. While nanobiotechnology promises in headlines to make our world better, it may in fact be busy taking us over so it can tailor us to the plan for the hive. Already transhumanists are looking forward to the creation of the post-human. An improved human that will have no gender, will not reproduce, will be a better performer in the workplace, will not be distracted by love or lust, will be free of disease thanks to these nanobots keeping it healthy. But all this is part of the fantasy. In reality, thanks to stressors on our physiology, infertility is soaring. Our sexuality is diversifying and the nuclear family is falling apart. Biotech is an exploding frontier. It is clever enough and small enough to enter and change our very cells. New forms of DNA have been invented. There is GNA, as I told you about, and PNA, a hybrid of protein and DNA, that will add to our double helix a third strand. When nanobiotech has a firm footing in us, it will be easy to upgrade and downgrade anyone and anything in any way. Oliver Curry, an evolutionist at the London School of Economics, predicted in 2007, the human race will one day split into two separate species, an attractive, intelligent, ruling elite and an underclass of dim-witted, ugly, goblin-like creatures. So here you have the e-workers and the elites. Transhumans will presumably be involved in this process, the process of transformation, the process of renovation, remaking us into what someone considers improved. We are transhumans now. Improved is only what fits certain specifications. For instance, a specimen that can work 18 hours a day, a specimen that is sterile, that will never have the responsibility of caring for others, a specimen that is even-tempered, 
with a narrow, predictable, predictable range of expression. All this is enhanced, improved. Better performance is just that, the ability to produce a better result. It does not mean a specimen with greater skills. It may mean a specimen with narrower skills and the ability to repeat a task. So while the current ethical debate is about whether or not we should upload computers into our brains and how human we will be when that happens, there is something happening on the nanoscale right now. What it is exactly is unknown to us. As attempts by lay people to communicate with scientists about Morgellons type materials are going nowhere. There is a blackout on this subject. Its victims are dismissed as having a psychological problem that is called delusional parasitosis. The presence of patented creations in our bodies gives rise to intellectual property issues. We know what has been done to small farmers into whose fields the winds have brought genetically engineered strains. They are sued by the powerful agricultural companies who own the patents. Will the day come when we are subjected to the jurisdiction of corporations whose patented materials we are carrying in our bodies? It doesn't matter how it got there. The fault is yours if it is simply in your possession. This is a forced partnership between us and them. This is how we will be eternally owned by them. This is how they can push our biology from homo sapien to homo evolutus without our having a say in it. For now, engineered technology in all living things is a secret. But one day we may be charged with unlawful possession of something that has become a part of us that we cannot get rid of. The nature of biology is to adapt. As more unnatural elements enter our bodies, if we cannot reject them, we will find ways to accommodate them. You could call it invasion of the body snatchers meet sleeping with the enemy. In fact, the original Body Snatchers movie contains some interesting lines. Your new bodies are taking you over, cell for cell, atom for atom, and you'll be born into an untroubled world. Don't fight it, Miles. It's no use. Their bodies were now hosts harboring an alien form of life, a cosmic form. Metabiology was a term coined by the famous Jonas Salk of the Salk polio vaccine. It describes a form of biological prospecting, exploiting genetics, using chemistry, physics, and radiation for commercial and other goals. The 1940s and 50s gave us the birth of radiation biology, the techniques of which were used to decipher the mysteries of heredity, genes, and immunity. Geneticists plumbed chemistry and physics using x-rays and UV light to irradiate plants, fungi, and fruit flies to see how mutations altered amino acids and enzymes to form a new biochemistry. All this continues today. We are living, walking laboratories for powerful science in a society